walkers, all of my victory walkers from around the world, thank you. Thank you for worshiping with us. Where have you been? I have been looking for you in the daytime with a flashlight. I couldn't find you anywhere, but thank God you got here. Maybe it took a pandemic to push you into the praise and worship here at Victory. Maybe it took some act of God. I don't know why you got here, but I do believe the Lord sent you. And I believe that he sent you because there's a word that he wants to impart into your life. Something that's going to make your life better. And hopefully after this experience with God in this worship service, you're going to leave here different, changed from the inside out. Thank you again for being here. Thank you for praising and worshiping God. Here we go. Are you ready? Listen, I've been worshiping God on this song or these songs all week long because I'm excited about the, the praise and worship that the praise team is about to offer. So get out of the bed, lift your hands, get ready to praise God. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I'll be back right after praise and worship.
be the church. Good morning, Victory. I'm so excited. Can't you tell I'm excited? I'm excited. I just want to take the time to say thank you for being the church. Because of you, we've been able through GYA, our initiative that stands for Give Yourself Away. We've been able to bless families in need during this pandemic. We've been able to partner with over 15 organizations over these past few weeks. Because of you being the church, just this week, we were able to partner with DuPage Township Food Pantry, where we were able to feed over 80 families. And it doesn't stop there. It goes on. We have a conference call that we just had this very week. We prayed for over 60 frontliners, doctors and nurses, and we spoke a spiritual word of encouragement and protection over their life. Not only that, we were able to donate over 40 different gift cards, which sponsored our whole floor for the ER. Thank you so very much for what you're doing. If you want to donate, if you want to sponsor one of these initiatives that we're doing, please feel free to go to getthevictory.org. Be the church. Thank you. When you give, it makes a difference. And Victory has made giving simple. Text Get the Victory or Get the Victory BC to 77977. Select the giving link. Enter the amount and gift type. If it's your first time giving, you can enter your payment details. Then simply confirm your gift. And just like that, you've made an impact. You can also cash app Get the Victory by downloading the app in the Apple or Google Play Store. Thank you for your generosity. Well, I pray that you enjoy praise and worship. I'm hopeful and prayerful that God has ministered to you already and conditioned your heart. Why? To receive the word. Trust me, the word of God is the most important thing in our lives. The Bible says it is so necessary. It is more important than our food. You know how important that is. Come on, we've been quarantined. I know you know how important that is. But I am so grateful for the privilege of preaching today because I believe this word is going to be life-altering, mind-blowing, and even life-changing. Before I jump into the word, however, let me just thank you. Thank you to every one of you who has been so incredible. Your faithfulness does not go unnoticed, not just by me, but by God. You have been praying, you have been sowing, and some of you have even been serving. Listen, this week, I want you to join us. We pray every week, twice a day. So jump on, go to getthevictory.org so you can find out about the prayer call. But this week specifically, we're going to cover and blanket our first responders, our frontliners, the people who are risking their lives, literally putting their lives on the line to make sure that other people have a, an opportunity to live. We want to thank them for what they're doing, first of all, but we also want to cover them in prayer that God will protect them and shield them as they serve other people. And if you've been watching the news this week, you know how important this is. Pray for our leaders, please, family. Pray that God would arrest their hearts, bring them to a place of conviction and even repentance Pray that God will ultimately guide them and give them wisdom. Pray that God would give them humility in this season, that they would receive in humility his wisdom. Pray that God would do a mighty work in their lives because people's lives are attached to the decisions that are being made. So if you have never prayed for your leadership in the country, in the world, in your local community, Trust me, it's praying time. And let's just believe that God will cover us and shield us and that we will continue to walk in victory. Praise the Lord. Are you ready for the word? Here we go. If you've gotten your Bibles, if you, if you have your Bible or your device, whatever you're using, come on and grab it. I know that you want to use your own device because you're going to study this later. It's not just for right now, but you're going to study this later. Study to show thyself approval. Work with that need not be ashamed. Somebody that can rightfully divide the word of truth for yourself. Study. That's the only way you're going to grow in the word. 
is that you spend time studying. So that's why you use your own device. That's why you use your own Bible. That's why you use your own tools because you get to make notations there and come back and revisit it later so that it will live even on another day. Amen? Amen. If you have your Bible, turn with me to Exodus, the third chapter. Very simple, very quick, very powerful, very right, very good, but very short. Exodus, the third chapter, and we're only going to do verse four. I'm going to read it aloud to you as you read along with me. It says, when the Lord saw that he had done or gone over to look, God called him from within the bush. He says very simply, Moses. Moses. And Moses says, here I am. I know, right? So simple, but so powerful. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am. Let's pray. God, it's a preachable moment. It's preaching time, and I need your help. Cancel every demonic distraction in the name of Jesus Christ. Every vice that the enemy has thrown at your people, shield and guard their minds right now that they might receive your truth. I yield my members unto you, your servant I have become, and I believe that you have set and orchestrated this moment so that your glory can be revealed, your truth may be made known in our hearts would be transformed. Now punctuate this moment with your presence, even in our living rooms, even all over the world, wherever we're watching God, punctuate it with your presence and make this word live. Make it live like never before. Thank you for the restart. Thank you that you're giving us the capacity to start all over again. You are good and you are God and we praise you in advance for what you are about to do. In Jesus' name. Come on, shout it with me. In Jesus' name. I hear you. Amen. Amen. Again, this week we're talking about the restart. We are talking about hitting restart and giving our, ourselves an opportunity to live through or to reignite what God has in store for our lives. It is powerful because every purpose from time to time needs a restart. Every person needs a restart. Everyone needs an opportunity to stop for a moment, take a pause, get, get in your position to hear from God, get new direction, and dial in to what he's, where he's trying to take you in your next season. The scripture says, he maketh you lie down in green pastures. But I love it because it goes on to say, so that he can restoreth your soul. Everybody needs a restart. And I know as frustrating as it seems, as frustrated as, it, as we are in this season, being isolated from one another, being quarantined in our own quarters, being, being, being put into a posture that where we shelter in place. I know that the frustration is amassing and, and it sometimes feels insurmountable. It looks like we're not going to be able to, to find normal again. Well, guess what? You have normal. What if this is your new normal? normal, but God is simply hitting the restart and giving us an opportunity to yet again find our prayer life, to find our relationship with him, to hear from him, to learn more about him, to spend time being productive and fruitful so that when we are launched out after the restart, we are better equipped to handle whatever the world throws at us. So, I know that it is sometimes daunting and frustrating, but think it not strange concerning the fiery trials, which are to try us as though some strange thing has happened. God is simply in this season preparing us for the restart. And I hope that you, you, you watched last week, you were worshiping with us, you came to worship with us last week because it's going to cause, it is the foundation that makes this particular sermon make more sense. Uh, in the text, very simply, uh, Moses, when the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, looking at the bush that was burning, God called him from within the bush. 
Moses, Moses, and Moses says, here I am. Understand in the life of Moses that Moses was in a restart season. He was in a moment. It was a time in Moses' life where he was about to embark on a new era. The old era had ended. God was calling him away from yesterday and into a completely different tomorrow. God was literally about to blow Moses' mind. And so he called to him. Moses answered. But it was because God was positioning him to get ready for a a new era in his life. Essentially, he was in a season of restart. And God says, I'm about to reset your life, Moses. I'm about to blow your mind. What you knew yesterday, even the mistakes you, me you made yesterday, even the inadequacies of speech and in the, uh, the lack of eloquence of speech that you think is a, an impediment, uh, even all of the, the, the things that you would use to, to think that I cannot get great glory out of your life in the new season, forget about it. Cancel those things because I I am about to show you how incredible a God you have, and I'm going to do it through a restart. I'm about to show you what I need you to do in this new season. I'm about to tell you what I need from you and what your role is going to be in the restart. I want you to go in and I need you to get my people. I need you to rescue them. You know the story. Uh, and if you don't know the story, please read the story. Find out what, he, what the, this text is talking about. But Moses made every excuse in the book including saying, I can't speak well. I have a speech impediment. God says, don't worry about it. I'll send somebody with you. Everything that Moses used as an excuse, God says, when I restart you, I equip you. You missed it. Let me try it one more time. When I restart you, I equip you with what you need to handle your new season. God is never going to carry us into a territory that he has not prepared us to be able to navigate. He's never going to position you for failure. That's a cruel action. And he's not a cruel God. God says, for I know the thoughts and the plans that I have for you, Jeremiah 29, 11, and it's not to harm you, but to give you hope and a future, which should give us confidence that if he's giving us a restart, we have no panic. We have no reason to panic, but we have cause to praise because he's not going to call us into a new season and not equip us to handle whatever is in front of us. You take five seconds and give God glory and give him praise right there because it is exciting to know I've got a God who cares enough about me that he'll give me what I need to handle where he's about to take me. And so in the text, Moses had to come to the realization that not only that there was a bush on fire, not only that it was, it was not being consumed, not only the mystery of how this is happening out here in the desert, but, but he had to come to the realization and conclusion that this is God and God's voice speaking to me from this burning bush. He, he, he had to some kind of way within himself get over the mystical mystery of how this phenomenon was even taking place. And he had to convince himself, speak to himself and decide to believe and know that this was God who was speaking. And so in this season, when we're going through the transitions that we're going through, when things are shifting and, and every day new rules, new regulations, new policies, new discoveries, new technology, new, uh, new, new remedies, new, new challenges, new frustrations are being manifested. It is more important now than ever that you learn to identify and hear the voice of God. You've got to be like Moses. Despite all of the mystical and mysterious and magnificent things that may be happening around us, all of the things that are bombarding our, our lives and our hearing and our mind, you have to get to the point where you acknowledge, accept, and you know the difference between voices that are in the world and the voice of God. This, my brothers and sisters, may be by far one of the most important things that you're going to be able or have to do. And that's to identify the voice of God. And one way to do that is to understand what other voices you're actually hearing. 
Uh, first of all, there's the voice of the devil. Uh, just as, as clearly and as succinctly as God speaks to our spirit, so does the enemy who is an evil spirit and seeks to separate us from the voice of God. And then there's the world. The world speaks loud. You've been hearing it for the last few months. The world is speaking loud. And then there's another voice that, that many of us will probably miss if I don't identify it. And I'm going to help you with it. That, that is the voice of your own desires. That's the voice of your own will. It, it is easy to get caught up in, in, in yourself enough that you start hearing yourself. And if you don't know how to distinguish and delineate between yourself, your wish, your will, your want over God's will and God's voice, God's direction, God's instruction, you are setting yourself up for a major setback. Here's what the scripture says. There is a way. That seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof is destruction. So I don't want my way. I need God's way. Because God's way leads to life. Works of the flesh lead to death. But works of the spirit of God lead to life. So your desires are a voice that you hear. And then lastly, and the most important one of all, is there is the voice of God. Now, each one of the voices that you hear in your life seek to communicate or to accomplish one specific task. For example, the voice of the devil, the voice of Satan, the voice of the enemy, it causes you or it is, it is, it is sent to you to cause you to doubt. In other words, the voice of the enemy is to make you question God. And then there is the voice of the world. The voice of the world, quite frankly and quite simply, it speaks conformity, that you do not need to do your own thing or you do not need to do it the way that, the, that God says, but conform to the way that is okay for the rest of the world. Then there are your desires. Your desires say satisfy. Just satisfy yourself. Make yourself happy. Do what makes you happy. And of course, there is lastly the voice of God, which seeks to accomplish relationship. God says, I'm trying to have a relationship with you. So let me run through them again, because here are the voices that you're up against. The voice of the devil, which is a voice of doubt. There's the voice of the world, which is a voice of conformity. There is the voice of your own desires, which is a voice to satisfy. And then there's the voice of God, which is a voice of fellowship, relationship, and covenant. So how do I determine, Pastor, which voice I'm actually hearing? Because I'm getting the lines blurred. Sometimes I think it's God, but it's actually my wants, my wishes, my desires. Sometimes I think it's God, but it's actually a trick of the enemy, and he's deceiving me into believing that it's one way and it's not the other way. Sometimes I hear the world, and let me be honest about it, Pastor, it just makes sense. Anybody feel any of these ways that it just makes sense? I mean, logically, if you put it together, but here's what I need you to get. Faith is not about your logic. It's not about your rationale. Faith is your ability to trust God even when you can't trace God. Faith is your ability to see the hand of God moving and working in your spirit and in your mind even when it looks like in the world nothing is happening. Faith is believing that this thing is going to end and that the storm will roll over and God's going to keep us through it. But more importantly, he's going to bring us out on the other side even when the numbers and, and all of the other things that are being manifested cause us to feel a different way. And so how do you determine which voice you are actually hearing? Y'all ask great questions at Victory on the global campus. I'm so glad you came today. You asked the best questions. Here's it. Here it is real simply. This is how you know how to determine which voice you're hearing. It's simple. Number one, the word of God. The word of God is a determining factor because God's word, the Bible says that God's word is sharper than the two-edged sword, the two-edged sword, it divides asunder, it separates what is right from what is wrong, it separates from what is good from what is bad. The word of God cuts it and divides it so cleanly and so clearly because it's so sharp that there is no mistaking what God's truth is. So God's word is the determining factor. If what you are hearing is not in a 
alignment with the word of God, which is sharp and which cuts and divides, then guess what? It is not God's voice. God's word is a derivative of God's voice. God's voice is a derivative, of, a derivative of God's word. They are inextricable from one another. When you are hearing God's voice, then you have to know it will be recorded in God's word. That's the first way to know. The second way or the second factor is the leading or calling to action. What is the voice telling you to do? How is the voice telling you to function? Because whatever voice you're hearing, if it's not telling you to do what God has told you to do, guess what? Ding, 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 ding. It's not the voice of God. Yes. You've got to know that the action that is being called for is a clear indication of whether or not it is God's voice or one of the other voices. Anytime, anything rather that speaks to you, is always trying to get you to do something. Pay attention. Because anything that is speaking to you is trying to get you to do something. When you hear the voice of the world, here's what the Bible says. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. In other words, forget about what you're hearing from the world because the world wants you to conform. But God says, no, I don't want you to be like the world. I want you to be transformed. So the world calls you to conformity, but God calls you into transformation. And so here's what the world will do. The world will say you need to live a certain way, dress a certain way, feel a certain way, irregardless of what God says. The world says fit in. The world says avoid confrontation and contention. The world says don't stick out. The world says go with the flow. The world says don't rock the boat. The world says be easy. The world says chill out. The world says sit down somewhere. But God says no, stand up. God says be different. You are a peculiar people. You're supposed to be odd and obvious. Stand out because that's what God requires. You are a city on a hill whose light cannot be hidden. Stand out. You are the, you are, you are the embodiment of God's image here on earth. Stand out. He says, you are, I have a hidden treasure and I hid it inside of you. Stand out. That's what God says. But the, but the world will tell you live the way that the world wants you to live because the voice that you're hearing is trying to get you to conform. In other words, be famous. Be on social media. Be popular. Do whatever it takes to be popular so that the world gives you likes. Do whatever you got to do. Play yourself. There are some people on the social media diaspora right now who are frustrating my, my spirit so bad because they're trying to give you money just to make a mockery out of you and so that you can fit in with the world's view and ultimately come away from it looking like you've been flustered and frustrated. Uh, I don't want to say a, a, I don't want to say it bad. I don't want to offend anybody, but looking like an idiot or what the Bible calls a fool or a foolish person. So please do not conform to the world, but be transformed by changing your mind. How do I change my mind? Let this mind be in me, which is also in Christ Jesus. Okay, pastor, I've heard that scripture, but what does it mean? You've got to put the word of God in place of the word of the world. You've got to drown out the noise so you can hear God's voice and God speaks through his word. There is so much noise, so many things that are competing for your ear, so many things that want to speak into your life, so many voices that want to talk to you. But there is so much noise in the land. That's why you have to shut it off. Drown out the noise with the voice of God. Let his word be so rich, so powerful, so strong, so prevalent, and so present in your life that it cancels anything that the world is issuing, that the enemy is giving. It cancels your own voice so that you can hear clearly the voice of God. See, the world's focus is on yourself. The world will tell you, make sure that you are good. Take care of numero uno. Make sure you take care of number one. God's focus is always taking care of others. 
God created us with the purpose of being a blessing or sowing ourselves into other people's lives. So if we're not careful, let me give you this caution as I turn this corner. If you're not careful, you will miss the voice of God. If you do not have an understanding of all the other voices that are seeking to communicate and get your attention, you will miss the voice of God. And based on his move, here's the danger. You'll miss the move and you'll also miss the season that you're in. Now, that's a very big danger because there's nothing like being out of season or that you've missed the move of God. When God moves and changes the seasons from one place to another, then you have to assimilate or accommodate what God has done. Otherwise, you will look foolish. You don't believe me? Then in the middle of June, when the sun is its hottest, you come out in a mink coat. Oh, yeah. Yeah, just, just fall out the house in a mink coat. And prayerfully, you won't fall out. Because everybody around you will know, oh, you missed your season. You, 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 you're wearing your coat in the wrong season. So it, it is possible that if you miss God, you will miss the move, the shift, and you will find yourself where God was and not where God is. Now, we know he's omnipresent. I'm not saying that he is not physically present, that his manifestation or the manifested uh, glory or presence of God cannot visit anywhere or is not everywhere at the same time. But you will miss where God was moving and not where God is moving in this season. So there is nothing, nothing that affects your life more than your ability to hear God's voice. Nothing affects you more than being able to hear God's voice. So here, here's three reasons why you need this voice. I, I, I can make that statement very blanket. I can make that statement based on what I just gave you. But I want to qualify it and take it even a step further so that you can discover why it's so important that in this season of restart, you start listening and hearing the voice of God. Here it is. Number one, it proves you are his child. Yeah, this is going to hurt some feelings, but I got to do it. In John, the 10th chapter, verses 27 and 28, he says this. My sheep, my people, my sheep, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Where it really turns the corner on us is verse 28. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. God says, when you're with me, you understand who I am. You hear my voice. One of the most amazing phenomenons that I have ever witnessed in parenthood is that I don't care what room I'm in and how many people are in the room, when I call my children's name, they hear me calling. And I don't care. It, it, is, it is not age specific. There's no demarcations in the demographic uh, data. That There's nothing that, that prevents this from prevailing. It is a principle that I have noticed and witnessed over and over and over and over and over again, including in my own life. I don't care where we are or what's going on. If my daddy, if he calls my smokey, if he says my name, it is the equivalent in my spirit. It is the equivalent in my bones. It is the equivalent in my body of God speaking through him to me. Because for whatever reason, it still shuts me down. When my daddy calls my name, I get nervous. I become attentive. I turn because I know his voice. It can be a thousand people around me, but I will recognize my daddy's voice. It's the same thing with God. He says, my sheep. They know my voice. In John, the 8th chapter, in the 47th verse, it says, whoever belongs to God, hears what God says. The reason you do not hear is that you do not belong to God. That's a tough pill to swallow. It's very bitter, but I promise you it needs to be swallowed because you've got to know that when you cannot identify the voice of God, God says, that's, that's because you really don't know me. 
That's because we're not in fellowship, communion. That's because you're not in me or you have not received me enough that you allow me to be in you. So please understand it is imperative that you, you master hearing the voice of God because it's the key or the evidentiary uh, 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 move that, that causes you to know and for God to be sure that you are his child. The second thing that you need to do or the second reason you need the voice of God in your life is because it keeps you from bad decisions. In Job, the 33rd chapter, verses 16 through 18, I love this, watch this. Then he, this is King James Version, so I'll break it down for you in a second, but it says, then he openeth the ears of men and sealeth their instruction. He opens or unstops their ears and he seals it with his instruction. He gives you wisdom and direction and instruction and he seals it inside after he opens up your deafened ears. Watch this, verse 17, that he may withdraw man from his purpose, that, that he may withdraw man from his purpose and hide pride from man. Watch this, this is, the, this is the one right here in 18. He keepeth back his soul. Watch this, here we, here we go again. Then he opens your ears, fills your heart with instruction to save your soul. Somebody tell God thank you. Because it keeps you from some decisions that you would have made that would have helped to destroy you from the inside out. But because God's instruction and you learn to hear him, God's instruction is so powerful, it has been invested and sealed in you to keep you from making decisions that would destroy you. Oh God, thank you that you didn't let me destroy myself. And, and third Third reason that you really need to understand how to embrace and to know the word of God or the voice of God is that it is the key to your productive life. Everybody has a plan. All these books and all of these self-help programs and all of these motivational speakers all have a plan on how to make your life productive. Well, here's what I've learned. Most of them get their principles out of, this, out of the real book, which is God's word. Most of the principles that they, are, that they offer you, they, they're, they're principles that are applicable to the Word of God. However, there are every now and then some principles that are offered that are not a part of the Word of God. And they seem right to you in that season. But the end, God says, will end in your destruction. So that's why it's important that you learn His voice because his voice will cause you to have a productive life. Here's what the scripture says. Thy word, Lord, have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. In other words, your word is going to keep me from being separated from you through sin. It is more necessary than your daily food. It is a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your pathway. God's word is so important because it's going to order your steps and make sure that the decisions you make, that the things that you do are exactly what needs to be done in order for you to walk in victory and live abundantly. I don't know about you, but it's worth it for me. It's worth it for me to check myself. It's worth it for me to, to every now and then shine the word of God and hear the voice of God so I can recalibrate, revamp, and ultimately restart. So, Pastor, uh, that was great. Now I know why I need the word of God. How do I hear his voice? I need his voice. I need a word. Speak, God. I, I can't tell that I'm, I can't hear you. I need, I'm listening, but I need you to hear your voice. God says, don't worry. I'm sending Pastor Norval to hook you up. I got you. I'm going to hook you up with what God has given me to share with you so that you will know how to hear God's voice. Here it is. Number one. You've got to be intentional and start with an attitude of submission. Start with an attitude of submission. You won't ever hear what you don't want to hear. Oh, I want to say that again. That was real good to me. You will never hear what you don't want to hear. Have you ever been in a situation as a parent? I'll talk as a parent, even as a child where your parents have told you something over and over again, or you told your children something 30,000 times. 
but because they don't want to hear you, they don't, then somebody else, uncle so-and-so, auntie so-and-so, the neighbor down the street, Pastor Norfolk, somebody else says it, and it's an aha moment, like, oh my gosh, did you understand that revelation? Oh, this is so phenomenal. You will never hear what you decide you don't want to hear. So you must submit so that you then can clearly hear what God is saying. Exodus, the fourth chapter, is a prime example of this submission. When Moses comes into the court of Pharaoh, watch this in verse 2, Exodus 4 and 2. Then the Lord said to him, what's in your hand? A staff, he replied. That's all I got is a staff, and you want me to walk in Pharaoh's court with this? Then the Lord said, throw it on the ground. Moses threw it on the ground and it became a snake. But then I need you to pay attention to Moses. Moses was a real dude. <laughs> Moses was a real brother. I need y'all to watch this. Pay attention. The Bible says that he said, throw it on the ground. Moses threw it on the ground. After he threw it on the ground, it turned into a snake. And here's what the scripture says. And he ran from it. Yeah, I don't know how you feel about it, but I think I would have had the exact same response. As a matter of fact, some of you deep people, oh no, because I know that the Lord is with me. Yeah, whatever. Whenever you get done, you throw a staff on the ground and it turned into a snake. You out of there. I'm out of there. As a matter of fact, don't get in my way because you may not make it out of there. Moses threw it on the ground. It turned into a snake. He ran from it. Then the Lord said to him, reach out your hand and grab it by the tail. Do you understand? Let me stop for a minute. Do you understand what kind of submission and faith he had to exhibit at that moment? You throw a staff on the ground. It turns into a snake. God says, reach out and grab it by his tail. Lord, we're going to have to talk for a minute. Wait a minute. No, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. First of all, I'm a little freaked out because it turned into a snake. Secondly, you want me to do what? What now? Reach my hand out and grab it by the tail. But look at the scripture. So Moses reached out and took hold of the snake and it turned back into a staff. That was an incredible act of submission. But pay attention to what he threw down. What did Moses actually throw down? If you look at it from the surface, you'll only see that he threw down a staff. But if you look deeper, you'll understand that it was more than that that he actually threw down. He threw down his identity because a shepherd's staff was an identifiable factor of who they were. Many of them were custom made. Many of them had certain attributes and qualities that were unique and specific to that particular shepherd. So it was him actually throwing down what caused people to even identify him as a shepherd. He was willing to submit and throw down his identity. The question that I have for you is, are you willing to throw down your identity to allow God to give you a new identity. You ever seen people who are, who are who are who they are because of what they have or what they do? Not because of who God has called them to be. Yeah, there are people all around you. They'll introduce them, themselves and give you a whole resume. Why? Because their identity is tied up in what they wear, what the brand name is on what they wear, who they know, where they go, what their profession is, how many degrees they have. But God says, if you really want to start hearing from me, throw it down. Put down your identity so that I can give you a new one. His identity was what he threw down and also he threw down his income. Because a shepherd needed their staff in order to herd the sheep. It was a part of their livelihood. It was how they made their living. So he threw down the very thing that, that he used in order to provide for his family. And he also threw down his influence. See, based on the number of sheep, it determined your affluence. So he, he threw down his affluence, but in the doing so, he also threw down his influence because the more you had, the more influence you had among the community. So what Moses did was submit it so he could hear clearly that this is God's voice. This is what God needs and requires from me. 
And the second thing that you must do if you want to hear the voice of God is you've got to believe that God cares about the details of your life. Here's what Matthew says in verse 10, chapter 10, verse 30. But the very hairs on your head are numbered. If God is concerned enough to know the very hairs on your head, to have numbered each one of the strands of hair on your head, if God is concerned with the, the minute things like that, then you've got to know that God is concerned about you, that you are a part of his family, that he does not treat you as an orphaned person, but once you receive him, he treats you as his own child. He's concerned about you. When you know this, then you'll listen more attentively. You'll recognize and you'll be able to hear more clearly the voice of God. Here's what I want to caution you about. Crisis breeds questions. Okay, say it with me. Crisis breeds questions. If you don't believe me, just look at what's going on in the world right now. The crises that we're seeing breed questions. Everything in our land right now is being questioned. We question the president. My God, are we questioning the president? We're questioning governors. Some of the decisions that are being made and the things that are being implemented. We're questioning the governors. We're questioning pastors. We're questioning everything in our land right now. But what you have to know is that when you start in a crisis which prompts questions and you start down the line of questioning, if you're not cautious, if you don't know the voice of God, you got to be careful because you'll also, also start questioning God. Here's what crises do. Crises it exposes our humanity. It exposes human frailty. And you realize that humans are subject to the conditions that are beyond their control. So in the middle of a crisis, you can start feeling unloved, uncared for. You, you can start feeling under or unvalued. And you realize that your human condition is beyond your control. So it reminds you in that moment of crisis that, 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 you, that you are not as great as you think you are. You don't have it all together like you thought you did. You are not as important as you thought you were because of these crises like we're dealing with now in the land has no respecter of person or no respecter of personality, no respecter of anything. It is everybody's common crisis. And in the process of crises, some people cannot accept that we're human and that some and because we can't accept we're human we have to start looking for whose fault it is it's got to be somebody's fault we got to blame somebody for this pandemic who can we blame what country can we blame what people can we blame and you've got to be careful because when you when you start doing that it's your humanity trying to explain in flesh god's divinity when it's just a part of your human experience, which means that there is limited information. There are things about this that we will not understand. We are frail. We are human. We are flawed. We are, we are limited in our scope and our capacity. There are limitations on your humanity. Here it is. Google. You can find, on Google, you can find anything. Google is one of the great tools of our time. Google is one of the first tools that, of its kind, so it makes it a, a powerful instrument in many people's hands. You can find out who the first president was. You can find out uh, the circumference of, of, of a specific area or territory. You can, you can find out who the, who, who the president of, of the United States was in any year. You can, you can Google and find out pretty much anything you want to find out, but nowhere in Google was it able to tell us that in 2020, we were going to be dealing with a pandemic. Yeah, you could Google it, but you weren't going to know the details, the ramifications, and, and the data, and, and the effect, and the impact, and, the, and, and all of the things that have happened in 2020. Because it is beyond our human limitation. Information is limited. And because of crisis, we assume, here's the danger, God doesn't care. And that's not true. God cares. There is nothing in your life that is unimportant to God. 
And the last thing that you need to understand is that you got to believe that God wants to answer your questions. In James, the Bible says, that, I'll give you wisdom. God says, I'll give it to you freely. Just ask me for it. I'll teach you. I'll show you. I'll break it down for you. God says, I'll do something incredible in your life. And it just starts with you saying, God, I want to know. I want to hear your voice. I want to be clear. I want you to speak through and speak to me. And so I want to hear, I want to recognize your voice. So in this season, it's a, it's a time for you to now become intentional about hearing God's voice. It's a restart coming. There is a restart here. There, you are in the season of restart. It will not be like this always. Everything is a season, as I said last week. Everything is a season. It's not going to last. And so when the season changes, when the shift happens, when transition is upon us, when the restart actually starts, will you know his voice? Can you hear it? Will you recognize it if you do? Is it too much noise around you? You got too much going on. Drown out the noise. Shh. I just need his voice. And here's the thing about God's voice. Sometimes it's not loud. We expect it to be thunderous, powerful, to reverberate throughout eternity, 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 eternity. Sometimes God doesn't speak loud. Many times, if not most. He just says, come here. Let me talk to you. Why are you whispering, God? Because when I whisper, you got to get closer. Come here. God said, this is me. You thought I was in all of that. This is me. So here's, here's your call to action. Because now you know, you got you to gotta know his voice. You need his voice in the restart. Too many decisions that are going to have to be made once we come out of this. Too many things that God has in store. You're going to blow some people's minds with what God is birthing through you in this season. And you're going to need his voice. You're going to need his voice. So here's your assignment. Five things that you're going to have to do to hear his voice. First of all, withdraw. Get alone with God. Pull away. Be intentional about isolating so that you can not have noise and distractions. A lot of times when people can't sleep, I just learned this this week from a friend of mine gave me this revelation and it was powerful. I want to share it. A lot of times you've been in, in the middle of the night, you can't sleep. I just can't sleep. I'm tossing and turning. A lot of times it's God calling you out of the sleep so that he can talk to you. Prophet Samuel experienced that in the Bible. Come here. I'm trying to talk. Pray. I want you to sleep. I want you to pray. I'm trying to tell you some stuff. And if you get up and start praying, you'll find out that it's some of the most powerful interventions, revelations, and fellowship that you're going to ever have in your life. He says, no, I don't want you to sleep. You want me. I don't know why I just can't sleep. It's because God is trying to talk to you. But you won't talk to him. He wants you to learn his voice. The second thing you're going to do this week is you're going to wait or start doing in this season. You're going to wait. Calm down. Ease your mind. Be calm. Your emotions and your body be still. Be calm. Rushing or hurry is the death of your prayer life. Because you don't have time. I got to hurry up and do this prayer. I'm going to pray from this time to this time. Sometimes you need to get rid of the time and just go before you. Set aside a day, a half a day, whatever. Don't rush it. Prayer has to be approached like a person. If not, it's not something that just happens. It's not an appointment. It, it, is, it is God calling you to himself. So it's, you have to approach it like a person. Most of us do prayer the same way. It's ritualistic. It's routine. We're going to pray at this time. We're going to pray for this long and this is it. If I'm calling you and I want to talk to you and you say, okay, you got two minutes, go. It's going to be a different kind of conversation because you're not going to hear me. You're too rigid. You're too ritualistic. 
approach prayer and just wait. We say, I want to hear from you, God. I want you to speak. I want, I want to say, I want you to tell me what I should do. Give me direction. Give me wisdom, Lord. I need to hear from you. And God says, I was just about to talk and you got up. Because you were too busy. You had stuff to do. Wait. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Be of good care. He will strengthen your heart. Wait. You got to be careful to wait. The third thing is you got to read the word of God. God speaks through the revelation of his word. Stop waiting for a voice and start looking for a verse. Wait on God. And then write it down. He's going to give you some stuff. I, I, I love it. Uh, some of you may be able to relate to this. But I have to keep my phone close to the shower. <laughs> Something about water. I don't know. I think it's the relaxation, it's the calm, it's when my mind is at ease. And I have to keep my phone close because I have to grab it and I have to do a memo and voice note to myself because it just flows. It just flows just like the water that I'm in, it just flows. And so you got to be ready to grab it because here's what I've learned over the years the hard way. I can't get it back. It's revelation and sometimes it's rhema, it's instant. Sometimes it's right there. If I don't grab it, I'll miss it. And you'll be like, what did he say? What was I hearing? What was... So be ready to write it down. Be ready to record it. Be ready to capture it. I've had songs come to me. Sermons come to me just the same way. I've had a whole sermon. I was excited. Pastor Chris was on the phone with me. We were, we were preaching to each other back and forth. We were excited about it. And something happened and I didn't get it recorded or written down. And so the next day I called him and said, man, what did we say? He said, I don't know. What did we say? Lost a whole sermon because I did not write it all down. And then lastly, review it. It's got to be rehearsed. It's got to be rehearsed. You got to live with it. Even people who speak prophetic words into my life, I want to record it because I need to go back and I need to hear it again and again. I need to, what I recorded on myself, for myself, I need to hear it again and again. What I've written, I need to read it again and again. And again. I need to get it in my spirit because it cancels out what the enemy is trying to tell me. It keeps me on task and on track. It aligns me with God's truth, God's will, God's way, God's word, because that's what I'm writing it based upon. I, I, will, I will prove it according to his text. If God, did you tell me, to, if you told me to do this, then you're going to have to show me where it is. And he'll lead me to it and I'll have that attached to what I've written. So I need to rehearse it to remind myself it's going to be what God says it's going to be. Come closer. God says, I want a relationship with you. He says, I've been trying to get your attention. Now I got you. Come closer. I don't want just a relationship right now, but I want an eternal relationship. I want one that lasts. And this is how you do it. Confess with your mouth. Believe in your heart that I am your Lord and that I was raised from the dead. You shall be saved. That's it. That's all that's been keeping you from me. I want to talk with you. I want to tell you great and wonderful things. Come closer. If you want to pray this prayer with me, especially if you're praying it for the first time, just repeat after me, Lord, thank you for this day and for keeping me alive for this very moment. I admit I've made some mistakes, but I'm so grateful for your forgiveness. I accept you as the Lord of my life, and I believe by faith you were raised from the dead. With this confession, I'm excited to say, I am saved. Come on and clap your hands wherever you are. Come on and give God glory for all of those who are raising their hands right now in the chat room, all of you new victory walkers in the kingdom. Thank God for you. It's the biggest and the best day of your entire life because you just came close enough to God to receive abundant life, but more importantly, everlasting life. Get into the word. Learn his voice. As a matter of fact, if you prayed it for the first time, text the word SAVED, SAVED to 38470. We want to connect with you. And if you're joining us here for the first time, this is your first time worshiping with us, we want to connect with you. We want to make sure that we sow into your life. We've got a gift that we're going to even send to you. And if you want to be a victory walker, a part of the army of believers under Victory Cathedral Worship Center, if you want to be a victory walker, 
We need you. We love you. And we know that God sent you. Connect with us. Here's what you're going to do. If you want to, if you want to join our movement, if you want to be a victory walker, or if you are here for the first time and want the special gift we're going to send to you, text the word CONNECT to 38470. You text the word CONNECT to 38470, and we are ready to connect with you and begin to welcome you because we believe that you just walked into victory. Until next week, be prayerful, be encouraged, come on, be faithful, be the church. God bless you. Hello, and thanks for joining us online at Victory. We hope you enjoyed today's message. Be sure to join us next week for another message of hope, healing, and empowerment. For more information about Victory, be sure to visit us online at getthevictory.org. Also, be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for daily inspiration and encouragement. Have a great week, Victory Walkers. Keep walking in victory, and remember to be the church.